So I just feel like this comes up so often. I know I've done a video on socialization before, but it's like the number one question that comes up whenever anyone experiences or encounters a homeschooling family in the wild. They always ask socialization. So socialization, I decided maybe I needed to look it up because my definition and other people's definition must be a little different. So the website that I found said, socialization is the activity of mixing socially with others, the process of learning to behave in a way that is acceptable to society. And also the third definition, the exposure of a young domestic animal like a kitten or a puppy to a variety of people, animals, and situations to help minimize fear and aggression and promote friendliness. I saw uh, in one of my homeschooling groups, another mom had commented this little golden nugget. She said, we educate children and we socialize dogs. And that just really spoke to my heart because I feel like, okay, homeschool kids go everywhere with their parent because a lot of people who have kids that are in school, public school, they do all of their errands while the kids are in school. So it's just them. Homeschool families don't usually have that option of uh, having, not having their kids with them. So their kids are usually with them when they're going to the grocery store, to the bank, to the library, to the park, wherever they're going. And they're interacting with people socially in all ages, in organic ways. It's not a forced conversation. When I used to teach, they were all about, when I used to teach public school, they were all about turn and talk to your partner, turn and talk to your partner, turn and talk to your partner. And it was very um, forced conversation. It wasn't something that the kids really enjoyed. Um, so having an organic conversation, something that just comes up naturally in our life, society, is much more beneficial than a forced conversation that you have to turn and talk to someone because your teacher told you to. Also, when exactly do kids get to socialize in public school? Yes, they are around their peers, but when are they allowed to like socialize and talk about whatever they want? Lunch? Recess? Most of the time, they're required to sit at their desk and work quietly, independently. Sometimes they have partner work, sometimes they have group work, but it's not it's not a, a choice that they have on what they're talking. They're talking about whatever the topic is that the teacher is working on. Sometimes I was in elementary schools that even went to silent lunches because the kids were too loud at lunchtime. And that just broke my heart because we're expecting these kids to be quiet all day in class. Now they have to be quiet at lunch and the only break that they have, they have to be quiet in the halls. They have to be quiet when they're getting their materials out. The only break that they have all day is recess. And I don't know if you've been around adults, like a group of adults trying to get them to stay quiet and listen to like a speaker. It's not going to happen. Teachers are the worst students. <laughs> we would have guest speakers come and we would just start talking. We're making lunch plans. It's nine o'clock in the morning. So it's not, um, it's not unusual for a human being to want to have social internet interaction that they control, not someone telling them when they're allowed to talk and what they're going to talk about. So I'm not really sure that public school is the best example of socialization anyway. Then I ran into some research where it was talking about negative socialization. I never even thought of this. They said that grouping kids together of the same age is actually not the greatest. We do it in our country for convenience because it's easier to group kids in grades and then that little cluster travels together through whatever teachers are teaching subjects, grades, whatever. But that's not really beneficial to the way that our mind works. Uh, just because you're in third grade doesn't mean that intellectually you're doing third grade math and third grade reading. You might be excelling at math and be a year behind in reading, but the public school system doesn't have that ability to meet the needs of the students. So they just lump them all together based on their age, the year that they were born, instead of what they are actually capable of doing. Whereas Homeschooling, you can really tailor to your child. If they're in fourth grade, but they're reading on a seventh grade level, 
you can totally do deal with that. You can find resources, you can find higher level reading, more critical thinking questions, all kinds of things to support them so that they continue to grow and develop further along. If they are behind in reading, there are also lots of things that you can do to help boost them up, uh, learning how to read and understanding how sentence structure works and all kinds of things like that. So you're really kind of stuck in a box when you are in a typical school setting just because of the limitations and the logistics of everything. They honestly cannot meet the, the needs of every child because they just, they're just, log just logistically, that's a nightmare. So as a homeschooling parent, you have most likely you have a better ratio unless you have 30 kids in your house, which is, I would imagine, pretty uncommon. Homeschooling families usually are larger, but probably not 30 kids. You're probably going to have a better ratio of adult or teacher to student, parent to child, and you'll be able to add some benefits in there for your kids depending on their level. So, went off on a tangent there. Well, let me rattle myself back here. Negative socialization is grouping, when you group all the kids together, they did studies of preschoolers and found that there was more aggression in the same age peer groups. Compared to the mixed age groups, they had more nurturing behavior. Because if you've been around older and younger kids, it can go one of two ways. The older kids can help the younger, or they can kind of spat with each other. So they found in these classes, in these young kids, when they grouped them specifically by the same age, there was more aggression. And then when they split them up and had like mixed groups, they found nurturing because the older kids were helping the younger kids. And then the younger kids were feeling that nurturing from the older kids. This is the same thing if you have like group play dates and uh, a different wide range of ages for your kids or life experiences that like going out and experiencing life. Um, when these kids grow up and graduate from high school, they're never going to be in that environment again where everyone is the same age, same ability that they have. Never again. It's only school that we do that. So it's not really preparing them for the real world. When they go into the workforce, they're going to have people that are smarter than them. They're going to have people that are younger and older than them, and they have to be able to interact with those people and communicate. I know when I was teaching middle school, I could really start to see the breakdown in communication. Um, kids didn't know how to talk to each other. They didn't understand um, nonverbal communication. They didn't look at each other in the eyes. It was very, very sad, and I blame a lot of it on technology. Um, but they, they just didn't have the skills that I had as a middle schooler, um, being able to talk to a teacher and ask questions and advocate for yourself. And if you'd got a grade that you weren't pleased with, being able to come in after school and work with a teacher. I didn't really see a whole lot of that because they just, they just communication was just a very big issue. So it's very similar to someone who is at home all the time and never does anything. So I'm sure that there are homeschooling families who are part hermit and never leave the house and the kids don't have any friends and that is obviously not what we're advocating for here either, okay? It's a balance. So yes, we homeschool. Yes, we spend a majority of our time at home, but we do wander out into the wild to do the things that need to be done, going to playgrounds, getting groceries, all those things. And those are immersive experiences for our kids where they are surrounded by people who are different from them, different ages, different races, different cultures, different abilities. We encounter all kinds of people in life and this having them in the homeschool environment where they're with their family all the time, they're able to experience that in a safe way. And if they have questions, then they can ask when it's appropriate. Hopefully they're not blurting out embarrassing questions. It depends on their age, but so you have to be intentional as a homeschool family to make sure that you are sprinkling those in um, if it's not already part of your schedule to go out and do those things with your kids because you don't want them to be stuck at home all the time or they might kind of fit that um, awkward child homeschool stereotype that people so often go to. So anyway, that's my second rant on socialization. If you have any thoughts on this, please drop it in the comments.